Hello dear students. Today's video session is about subtopic number 4.7 of subject power electronics of your fifth semester which is types of cycloconverters, single phase to single phase cycloconverters, single phase to bridge type cycloconverters. Before we proceed, we shall see what will be the outcome of this video session. After this session, the students that is you will be able to differentiate between different types of cycloconverters. Now before we proceed to the types of cycloconverters, let me brief you about what cycloconverter is. Now basically cycloconverter converts frequency that is input frequency is different from the output frequency. Input frequency may be higher or lower than the output frequency. Now, how it is different from other methods of frequency conversion? Basically, there is also another method of frequency conversion in which two types of converters are employed. AC supply is converted to DC supply using a rectifier and then this DC supply is converted to AC supply. So, in this way, input frequency and output frequency are different. That is, the frequency has been converted. Input frequency will not be equal to output frequency. So, how this cycloconverter is different? In cycloconverter, there is no intermediate DC stage. That is, AC supply is not converted to DC supply and then DC supply is not converted to AC supply. The frequency conversion occurs without intermediate DC stage. We shall see how in later part of this video session. So let's now move to types of cycloconverters. So these are the four types of cycloconverters. The first one is step up and step down type cycloconverter. In step up cycloconverter, the output frequency is higher than the input frequency. In step down converter, the output frequency is lower than the input frequency. Second is constant frequency input and variable frequency output as well as variable frequency input and constant frequency output type of cycloconverter. The statement is self-explanatory. In one, the input frequency is constant while the output frequency can be changed, it is variable. While in the other one, the input frequency is variable, but the output frequency is kept constant. Third one is single phase to single phase type cycloconverter. In this cycloconverter, input supply is single phase AC and output supply is also single phase AC. Now, they are of two types center tab transformer or midpoint type and bridge type now the fourth one is three phase to single phase in three phase to three phase type cycloconverter in three phase to single phase type the input is three phase ac while the output is single phase ac and in three phase to three phase type both the input and the output supply are three phase ac Now we will study single phase to single phase type cycloconverter step down type. In step down type cycloconverter, output frequency will always be less than input frequency. Now we shall first study center tap transformer or midpoint type. This is the circuit diagram in which there is a single phase transformer whose second rewinding is tapped at its center at its midpoint O. Where P and Q are the terminals of the second rewinding of the single phase transformer. That's why its name is center tapped transformer or midpoint type cycloconverter. There are four SCRs P1, N1, P2, N2. P1 and N1 are connected in anti parallel, while P2 and N2 are connected in anti parallel. P1 and P2 constitute the positive converter group. N1 and N2 constitute the negative converter group of this configuration. What this means? This means that when P1 or P2 conducts, 
the direction of flow of current through the load will be positive that is from point R to point O. When N1 or N2 conducts the direction of flow of current through the load will be negative that is point O to point R. Now this configuration will generate an output waveform of frequency equal to one third the input frequency. Say for example if the input frequency is 60 hertz the output frequency will be 20 hertz. 60 divided by 3. Depending upon the polarities of terminals P and Q of the second dividing of the transformer, SCRs are gated. Natural commutation is used for turning off these SCRs. Now we shall study their functioning for two types of loads. First will be purely resistive load, second will be for RL type of load. So we shall first study for purely resistive load. Now during the first positive half cycle or during the first half cycle P and Q will be positive and negative with respect to point O. So P1 will be forward biased and if triggered current will flow in the path P to P1 to R to load to point O. So this is the positive direction of flow of current through the load. During the first negative half cycle or during the second half cycle Q and P shall change their polarity. Q will be positive, P will be negative with respect to O. P1 which was conducting during the first half cycle shall commute it naturally. P2 will be forward biased and if triggered current flows in the path Q to P2 to R to load to point O. So this is also positive direction of flow of current to the load. Now during the second positive half cycle or during the third half cycle again P will be positive, Q will be negative with respect to point O, P2 will be commutated naturally and P1 will be followed by and if triggered current will have the path similar to that during the first half cycle that is positive direction of flow of current. Now during the fourth half cycle or during the second negative half cycle O is positive with respect to P. So N1 will be forward bias and if triggered current will flow in the path O to load to R to N1 to point P. That is negative direction of flow of current to the load. During the third positive half cycle or during the fifth half cycle N1 will be commutated naturally. Q1 will be negative with respect to O. So N2 will be forward bias this time. And if triggered, current will flow in the path O to load to R to N2 and point Q. This is also the negative direction of flow of current through the load. Again, during the sixth half cycle or during the third negative half cycle, again P will be negative with respect to point O. So, N1 will be forward biased and if triggered, current will have the same path as it had during the fourth half cycle or during the second negative half cycle. Now let me show you the waveforms. Now the first waveform is of the input supply and the second waveform is of the output supply. So as you can see in the waveform of the output supply, during the first three half cycles current direction is positive which becomes negative during the next three half cycles. So during the first three half cycles, that is first positive half cycle, first negative half cycle, second positive half cycle, the direction of flow of current through the load is positive, that is from point R to point O. And during the next three half cycles, that is during the second negative half cycle, during the third positive half cycle, during the third negative half cycle, the direction of flow of current through the load is negative, that is from point O to point R. So looking from the waveforms we can say that one positive half cycle or one negative half cycle or you can say one half cycle of the output will constitute three half cycles of the input. That's why the output frequency will be one third of the input frequency. Say for example, if the input frequency is 60 Hz, the output frequency will be 20 Hz. 
if the input frequency is 50 hertz then the output frequency will be 16 whole 2 by 3 now we shall study with R L load now practically it is not always possible to have a purely resistive load in R L load energy is stored in the inductor as current passes through it due to this the current continues to flow even when the half cycle is complete due to which there will be a delay in commutation of these SCMs. I shall move to the waveforms directly. So remember that circuit of single phase to single phase type cycloconverter, center tape transformer or midpoint. Now during the first positive half cycle P will be positive with respect to point O. So forward biased SCR TP1 if trigger starts conducting and load current starts building up in the positive direction from point R to point O. Now here instead of P1 we are using TP1 instead of P2 we are using TP2 instead of N1 we are, we are using TN1 and instead of N2 we are using TN. So during the first positive half cycle the direction of current will be positive from point R to point O. Now this load current becomes 0 at omega t is equal to beta. You can see omega t is equal to beta from the waveform. This load current becomes 0 at omega t equal to beta where beta is greater than pi but less than pi plus alpha. Now TP1 will naturally commutate at omega t is equal to beta which is already reverse biased after omega t is equal to pi. After the first positive half cycle Q1 is positive with respect to O. So forward biased SCR TP2 if trigger starts conducting and again load can start building up in the positive direction from R to O. Load current becomes 0 at omega t is equal to pi plus beta and TP2 will naturally commutate. At omega t is equal to 2 pi plus alpha again TP1 which is forward biased is triggered and the above process is repeated. Now after first 4 half cycles forward bias TN2 is triggered at omega t is equal to 4 pi plus alpha as q is negative with respect to o. It starts conducting current starts to build up but now in negative direction that is from point o to point r. At omega t is equal to 5 pi plus beta load current becomes 0 and TN2 will commutate naturally. At omega t is equal to 5 pi plus alpha Followed by TN1 is triggered and current starts building up in the negative direction from point O to point R. At omega t is equal to 6 pi plus beta, TN1 is naturally commutated as load current becomes 0. At omega t is equal to 6 pi plus alpha, again TN2 is triggered and the above process is repeated. Now, With RN load, we studied output frequency will be equal to 1 by 3, that is one third of the input frequency. Now here, I have taken a configuration which will generate output frequency equal to one fourth of the input frequency. As you can see, the first waveform is of the input voltage, the second waveform is of the output voltage. So here one half cycle of output waveform constitutes four half cycles of the input waveform. Therefore output frequency will be one fourth of the input frequency. Thyristors of both the groups that is of the positive group and the negative group. They remain off for some period of the half cycles which depends upon the power factor as well as their firing angles alpha. Now we shall see bridge type cycloconverter. 
let me show you the circuit first in this type of configuration there is no need of any transformer there are 8 SCRs out of which the first 4 TP1, TP2, TP3 and TP4 form the positive group while the last 4 TN1, TN2, TN3 and TN4 form the negative group. So positive group will conduct during the positive half cycle and negative group will conduct during the negative half cycle. Here also SCRs are turned off by natural commutation. No forced commutation is used. It is worth noting that both the groups should not conduct at the same time, that is simultaneously, otherwise that will result in dead short circuit. Now here also we shall study its working for purely resistive load as well as RL. Now first we shall study purely resistive load. During the first positive half cycle, point A is positive with respect to B. So when TP1 and TP2 which are forward biased are triggered load current will flow in positive direction that is from R to S through the load. At the end of this half cycle TP1 and TP2 are naturally commuted because the current will become zero. During the first negative half cycle or during the second half cycle B is positive with respect to A. So now TP2 and TP3 which are forward biased are triggered and load current flows in the positive direction again that is from R to S through load. Again at the end of this half cycle TP2 and TP3 are commutated naturally. During the second positive half cycle or during the third half cycle TP1 and TP4 again will be followed by as A is positive with respect to B. So if triggered load current will again flow in the positive direction from R to S through the load. At the end of the third half cycle, TP1 and TP2 are naturally commuted. Now during the fourth half cycle or during the second negative half cycle, B is positive with respect to A. But this time forward biased TN3 and TN2 are triggered. So current will flow in the negative direction that is from S to point R through the load. At the end of this half cycle, TN3 and TN2 are naturally commuted. Now during the third positive half cycle, A is again positive with respect to B. So forward bias TN4 and TN1 are triggered due to which the load current will now flow through the load in negative direction that is from point S to point R. At its end, TN4 and TN1 are naturally commuted. Again during the third negative half cycle we will again be positive with respect to A. So TN3 and TN2 which are forward biased now are again triggered due to which the load current flows in the negative direction that is from point S to point R through the load. At its end TN3 and TN2 are naturally commuted. Let's see the waveform. The first one is the input waveform, the second one is the output waveform. So for first three half cycles, positive converter group conducts due to which the direction of current for the first three half cycles will be positive through the load, that is point R to point O. While during the next three half cycles, negative converter group conducts due to which the direction of flow of current through the load will become negative that is from point S to point R. Here also the output frequency is one third of the input frequency. Now we shall study for RL load. Let me show you the waveforms. The circuit will be same. Now for purely resisting loads, the load current and load voltage are in phase and conduction of load current is discontinuous. Both the positive and negative converters work in rectifier mode. But when the load consists of inductance apart from resistance or in addition to resistance, current lags the voltage by say angle phi and the conduction of current may be continuous or discontinuous. This depends upon the power factor. 
Now, from the waveform, during the time period AB, load voltage is positive but the load current is negative. So, load current is fed through the second bridge and SCRs in the first bridge cannot be triggered until this current becomes zero. The first bridge is consisting of TP1, TP2, TP3, TP4 while the second bridge consists of SCRs TN1, TN2, TN3, TN4. Now, during the time period BC, SCRs of the first bridge are triggered. Both the load voltage and current are positive. First bridge works in rectifier mode and supplies power to the load. During the time period CD of the waveform, load voltage is negative but load current is positive. So, SCRs of the second bridge can be triggered and first bridge works in the inverter mode. During the time period DE of the waveform, both the load voltage and current are negative. So, second bridge works in rectifier mode and supplies power to the load. So, during the time period A, B, C, D, E, F of the waveform, the instantaneous power is negative and the energy from the load inductor is supplied back to the supply through the cycloconverter. So, this is the working of bridge type cycloconverter for RL load. Now we shall study the working of bridge type cycloconverter for RLO. Let me show you the waveforms. For purely resistive loads, the load current and load voltage are in phase and conduction of load current is discontinuous. Both the positive and the negative converters work in rectifier mode, but when the load consists of inductance with addition to resistance, current lags the voltage by say angle phi and the conduction of current may be continuous or discontinuous which depends upon the power factor. Now there are points A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H in the first waveform. During the time period A, B of the waveform, load voltage is positive but load current is negative. So load current is fed through the second bridge that is TN1, TN2, TN3, TN4 and SCRs in the first bridge TP1, TP2, TP3, TP4 cannot be triggered until this current becomes zero. Now during the time period BC, SCRs of the first bridge are triggered. Both the load voltage and current are positive and first bridge works in rectifier mode and supplies power to the load. Now during the time period CD of the waveform, load voltage is negative but load current is positive. So, SCRs of the second bridge cannot be triggered and first bridge works in inverter mode. During the time period DE, both the load voltage and current are negative. So, second bridge works in rectifier mode and supplies power to the load. So, from the waveform, we can see during the time periods A, B, C, D, E, F, the instantaneous power is negative and energy from the load inductor is supplied back or is fed back to the supply through cycloconverter. Now we shall study circulating current free and circulating current mode operation of bridge type cycloconverter. Now in bridge type of single phase to single phase cycloconverter, When load current is positive, SCRs of the first bridge are triggered while that of second bridge are not triggered. First bridge means TP1, TP2, TP3, TP4. Second bridge means TN1, TN2, TN3 and TN4. In the same way, when load current is negative, SCRs of the second bridge are triggered while that of the first bridge are not triggered. Due to this, no circulating current flows in the circuit. This mode or this operation is known as circulating current free type of operation. For inductive loads, if the load current is of discontinuous type and if non-circulating current type operation is desired, then the control scheme becomes complicated. So, if small circulating current is permitted, 
then the control scheme becomes comparatively simple. So in such case a current limiting reactor is connected between the positive and the negative group of converters. As you can see there is an interbridge reactor connected between the positive and the negative. So this is the circulating current mode of operation of bridge cycloconverter. Now we shall study bridge type cycloconverter for output frequency equal to one fourth the input frequency. Now we have already discussed bridge type cycloconverter for output frequency as one third the input frequency. So to obtain output frequency as one fourth the input frequency, the circuit will be same but there will be slight difference in operation. So what are these differences? First one is the SCRs from the positive group are triggered till the fourth half cycle of the input frequency. Second difference is SCRs from the negative group are fired in the fifth half cycle of the input frequency. So the firing sequence of the SCRs will be TP1, TP4, then TP2 and TP3, then TP1 and TP4, then TP2 and TP3. So the positive group will conduct for the first four half cycles. Then TN4, TN1, TN3, TN2, TN4, TN1 and TN3, TN4. So here the negative group will start conducting from the fifth half cycle. So for 50 Hz input frequency, the output frequency will be 12 whole number 1 by 2 Hz, fourth part of 50 Hz. Now we shall study step up type single phase to single phase cycloconverter. For step up type, output frequency will always be greater than the input frequency. First we will see center tab transformer or midpoint. There is no difference in the circuit. The circuit is same as that of the step down type. But the main difference is commutation of SCRs. Now in step down type, the SCRs were allowed to commutate naturally. But here they won't be allowed to commutate naturally. We shall use forced commutation. So I am not showing the circuit diagram again. Let's just see the waveform. During the first positive half cycle of the input frequency, P is positive with respect to O and O is positive with respect to Q. So forward bias P1 is triggered and current flows in the positive direction that is P to P1 to R to load to O. Now there are numbers 0 to 12 marked in the second waveform. Just see there. At point 1 of the waveform, P1 is first commutated and forward bias N2 is triggered and current now flows in the negative direction from O to load to R to N2 to Q. Again at point 2, N2 is first commutated and forward bias P1 is again triggered and current again flows in the positive direction through the so for points 3, 4, 5 and 6, SCRs N2 and P1 are triggered and force commutated in sequence, in a sequential manner. Now let's see, for the first negative half cycle of input frequency, Q is positive with respect to O and O is positive with respect to P. So forward bias P2 is triggered and current flows in the positive direction Q2 to P2 to R to load to O. At point 7 of the waveform, P2 is force commutated and forward biased N1 is triggered and now current flows in the negative direction that is from O to load to R to N1 to P. Again at point 8, N1 is force commutated and forward biased P2 is again triggered and current flows again in the positive direction through the loop. So for points 9, 10, 11 and 12, SCRs P2 and N1 are triggered and force commuted in sequence. So 
from the waveform, looking at the waveform, what we can say that one half cycle of input frequency consists of six half cycles of output frequency. So for 50 Hz input supply, the output frequency will be 300 Hz, six times the input frequency. Now we shall study bridge type, step up type, cyclocanal. Here also the circuit is same as that of the step down type. The main difference is SCRs are not commutated naturally. Instead, forced commutation is used. Here also we shall directly jump to the waveform section. During the first positive half cycle, a is positive with respect to B, so forward bias TP1 and TP4 are triggered and current flows in the positive direction through the load, that is point R to point S. At point 1 of the input frequency, TP1 and TP4 are forced commutated and forward biased TN4 and TN1 are triggered and current now flows in the negative direction. That is from point S to point R. Again at point 2, TN4 and TN1 are force commutated and forward bias TP1 and TP2 are again triggered and current again flows in the positive direction through the load. So for points 3, 4, 5 and 6, SCRs TN4 and TN1 as well as TP1 and TP4 are triggered and force commutated sequentially in a sequential manner. During the first negative half cycle, B is positive with respect to A. So, forward bias TP2 and TP3 are triggered and current flows in the positive direction, R to S. At point 7 of the waveform, TP2 and TP3 are force commutated and forward bias TN2 and TN3 are triggered and current now flows in the negative direction, S to R. Again at point 8, TN2 and TN3 are force commutated and forward bias TP2 and TP3 are again triggered and current again flows in the positive direction. So for points 9, 10, 11 and 12, SCRs TN2 and TN3 as well as TP2 and TP3 are triggered and force commutated in sequence. Here also it can be said that one half cycle of input frequency consists of six half cycles of the output frequency. So, for 50 Hz input frequency, we will have 6 times the output frequency, that is 300 Hz. Now, the final topic of this video session is applications of cycloconverters. These are the 7 applications of cycloconverters. The first one is the electric traction. The second one is variable speed constant frequency AC supply in ships and aircrafts. Third one is the speed control of high power AC drives. Fourth one is HVDC transmission. The fifth one is static VAR generation. Sixth one is induction heating. And the seventh one is gearless ball mill drive. Thank you everyone for watching this video session.